everybody, welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. It is the Star Wars semifinals. It's Dimolanta versus Damon. Nikki Dimolanta versus Alex Damon. This is what a turn of events we had this year. It started off, wow, Will Dimolanta play Damon and Andrew Dimolanta beat Alex Damon twice. And now Nikki Dimolanta, the undefeated Nikki Dimolanta will be playing the legendary Star Wars champion Alex Damon here today. What a matchup this is, Mark. It's quite a Star Wars household that both of these competitors are currently existing in. And if there were any questions going into this season, whether Andrew Demolanta and his prowess in Star Wars might cast a shadow over Nikki, she has not only shattered those, but she also is now starting to cast her own large shadow amongst all of the Star Wars division because what an incredible competitor she has been. So much knowledge in this galaxy, but she's going to, uh, I mean, you can never count out somebody like the demon. Alex Damon, he may not currently be belted, but he's just one of those competitors. Reminds me of his manager's favorite ball club, the New England Patriots. You just never wanted to see them come the postseason. Didn't matter what the record is, they were always a threat to go the distance. This is going to be a fun one, bud. It's true, but there's something also. Is the Dimolanta household the New York Giants? You know, that's 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 what you could look at when it comes to this. Because remember, Andrew Dimolanta took out Damon twice. First time, it was one of the best matches that we ever saw, the first 51-50. The second match, you would say that Andrew did pretty well and, and won pretty convincingly. Nikki Dimolanta has been studying with Andrew. That's a great study partner to have. And what I really liked when I spoke to Nikki Dimolanta, she wanted nothing to do with this league. She wanted to shoot. She liked being part of it. She liked being she let she she's a big fan of it. She oh, enjoys it. She talks That's about nice. it on her, on, talk, on her on her show that she does with with talking Schmodown with with Andrew. But when I talked to her about competing, she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, I'm telling you, I think you'd be pretty good. And she is good. And then some and because she trained for Damon. She trained for Damon when she wasn't even competing. Competing, excuse me, is this going to be another, is is she going to have his number or is Alex Damon now after having to defeat his wife, now coming out of the, you know, the battlefield, is the demon back? A lot of questions to be answered. So basically what you're saying is that if we were to be a fly on the wall of a double date between these two couples, there'd be a lot of Star Wars talk and the old gentle Harloff arm twist works once again. That's why I'm still here some 30 decades later. Here's a look as to how these two competitors got to this match right here, right now. Alex Damon defeats Molly Damon 23 to 20. Looks really good. The division has changed significantly, though. He's got to get just that much better if he gets into once he gets into that next round. He went into it thinking it was going to be easy. And let me tell you something going forward. Nothing will be easy. We have Ross coming in from the FCL, making his big debut here in the MTS. It's super exciting, but he's going up against someone whose debut was incredible this season in Nikki DeMolanta. What are your thoughts on your next opponent now being that it is officially Nikki DeMolanta? I don't, I don't want to play another DeMolanta. <laughs> <laughs> DeMolanta Damon. DeMolanta Damon. It's me this time. You are on a break. Two and oh, Star Wars competitor Nikki Dimolanta. Jake, you don't have to. <laughs> I'm still here. And I figured everyone loved Laura's Joker makeup so much last time. Thought, let's give the people more of what they want. <laughs> your stats right now are through the roof. You have two wins under your belt. Dimmy is on a run right now. After her first match, I remember all of us talking about a star being born about Dimmy specifically. And I think today, once again, she has shown her worth. Kind of funny because she only missed like one question in the whole match. Because Star Wars. That's just because what comes Star Wars. Because Star Wars. I don't know what kind of backwards parallel universe bizarro world we're living in that i'm the one who's preparing for a match against alex damon excuse me what yeah i get it she's going up against alex damon i know the guy won the belt the guy defended the belt what feels like a hundred times but you know what that time is over well she's not the demolanta i want to destroy but she'll do for now 
There are many people that said no one's ever going to beat him. He's never going to lose. He's never going to miss a question. He looks unbeatable. Can he get back to that dominance, Andrew? Can he look like that again? Who's going to hold the Star Wars belt next? And let me get my try at it. But I'm tired. I'm tired of this now. Of course I'm in Alex's corner. I'm always going to be in Alex's corner. He's a legend. And if people forget that, then they're really short-sighted. He is the GOAT of the Star Wars division. He's seven and three, and he has a ton of experience playing at the top, most elite level of this division. And if experience outranks everything, then I guess I better start getting some. And you know who I'm really sick of? Anybody named Dimalanta. Be specific. We're talking about Nikki Dimalanta here. She is, in my humble opinion, the Star Wars player to beat. Okay, she gets, she's so good, and she gets freaking better every time she plays. Dimalanta this, Dimalanta this, oh my god, Nikki Dimalanta. Prove it, sis, what do you got? A life zone of Cloud City? I mean, what is that? Like, I had never, ever heard that before, so who knows how the next match is going to go. If watching you has taught me one thing, it's that no question is easy when you're around. I was the hottest. I'm still the hotness. You are the hotness. You remain the hotness when I get that belt back. I know you said that I'm not the Dimalanta that you want to destroy, but guess what? You're stuck with me, Sky Guy. And what a story it is, Mark. There's so much of suspects playing great this season. And you talk about playing great. Sam Levine not able to be here today. Amaru Moses is going to be filling in for, for Sam Levine. And I had a chance to speak to Amaru at, in Brooklyn after the big event. And I went up right up to him and I said, man, if there was anybody that impressed me this year, dude, it is you. The way he played against Mike Kalinowski, had him on the ropes, was just that close of being the inner geekdom champion. But man, this is a guy who knows the game. So this could also be a, an advantage here for Nikki DeMolanta because Amaru Moses certainly knows knows the game pretty well, but Roxy Stryer, who is a manager who has managed Damon before in championship matches, and Roxy wants to go to a live event. Roxy wants to go to Spectacular. Roxy wants to get Damon to that second Star Wars championship. So, so much on the line. The, the hype is real. It's the classic Roxy Stryer question. She just wants to be invited to the dance. And then yep. once she gets there, she can make a lot of noise. I know both managers, Roxy and Amaru, probably don't take kindly to your New York Giants reference, but Nikki could be that spoiler today. We're about to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Three rounds in the ultimate schmodown Star Wars tournament. Introducing first, representing the usual suspects with a record of two wins, no defeats, she is Nikki Dimmy Dimma. There is Nikki Dimalanta in that classic background. We know it well. She awaits Alex Damon, and Nikki is here, ready to go, and we will be with her in just a moment. And her opponent, representing the stars, with a record of seven wins, three defeats, and two knockouts. He is the former movie trivia schmodown Star Wars champion of the world, Alex the Demon Damon. Alex the Demon Damon, there is the champion, the former champion. He awaits the Stars jersey. He awaits for Nikki Dimolanta. And here we go. All right, Mark, our competitors have entered the virtual battlefield. The rules of round number one, sir, if you will. 
Round number one of a Star Wars match works as thus. It's a semifinals, but it's a regular run-of-the-mill round one, or at least it should feel that way. Ten questions from ten different corners of Star Wars Schmodown know-how will emerge. Each question is worth a point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing. At least there isn't in round one. Wink, wink. You each have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at each question, which is asked to the field. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I'll remind each of you, you have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. Name for the famed Forest Moon of Endor podcaster JTE. That's your repeat. You need to buy another 15 seconds to get that correct answer from the back of your brain to the front. Use a JTE rule. You can also simply say, repeat the question. You also each have one challenge you may utilize. At any point throughout the three-round match, we'll bring in managers, we'll deliberate, and it will be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place, although you, the competitor, may initiate the challenge. And with all that, Christian, I should remind both competitors, it also helps if you've seen films in the Star Wars universe. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, sorry about that. Should have sent that note. All right, no. so start with Alex Damon. Are you ready? I am ready. And Nikki, are you ready? Sure. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. Round number one. Question number one. Here we go. Starting with Return of the Jedi. What Imperial officer was portrayed by Kenneth Colley? Already, the battle begins between Damon and Demolanta. It's exciting, man. I mean, it, it, the last names aside, it just is so exciting to see competitors Five, of this caliber. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Start with Alex. Admiral Piet. Yes. And Nikki. Firmus Piet. Got it. All right. So now we get to question number two. The guy's name is Firmus. <laughs> I thought it was Admiral. His, uh, <laughs> his parents were very uh, braggadocious. Your question, number two, is in the category of the Clone Wars. And for a point, who voiced the character of Rhoda the Hutt, also known as Stinky in the film? Oh, God, I, that was worth the price of admission just to watch you say Rhoda the Hutt, or Rhoda, as you say. <laughs> Am I already mispronouncing names? Doesn't matter. Stinky. Even better. Five. Four. Stinky. Three. Rot. Two. One. Pens down. Hands up, please. And we start with Nikki. David Accord. Yes. And Alex. Didn't know it. So Nikki DeMolanta up by one here. It is 2-1 as we get to question number three. This is who said it. Star Wars quotes. Which Jedi said the line? He is a political idealist, not a murderer. I read that like a casting director, I think. It was very giving to yeah. the actor who's also the it role. Was. You thought it was? I didn't think it was. I thought it was very cold, a cold read, as they say. Five. Make him earn it. Four. <laughs> three. Two. One. Pens down. And Alex. Key Adi Mundi. Yes. And Nikki. Key Adi Mundi. All right, so we're all right now. Nikki Dimolanti, excuse me, Nikki Dimolanti up by one. It is three two as we get to question four. And we always love it when Nick Mundy's cousin makes an appearance on the show. Your next question is in the category of episode one, The Phantom Menace. And it is in The Phantom Menace, what is the home world of pod racer Elon Mack? Speaking of home worlds. I'm Ru Moses, managing from my home state. Christian, the last time you were in North Carolina was? In college. Five, huh. four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start here with Nikki. I don't know. I said Tatooine. It's incorrect. And Alex? Harloff Minor? <laughs> Great answer, <laughs> but incorrect. Oh. <laughs> what a question. Blue four, yes. There's four, at least four planets with the name Clue. Wow. What okay. a question. Stumping both Nikki and Alex there. What a question. Now we get to question five. The Last Jedi. When the stable children help Rose and Finn escape on Canto Bite, Rose leaves one of them with what gift? Gift? What gift? I can tell you. Don't, don't, don't David Bowie me. I know what you're trying to do there. Five, 
four, three, two, one. Thank you, PLD. Pens down, please. And we start here with Alex Damon. Uh, ring with the Rebel Insignia. Correct. And I said her resistance ring. Yeah, uh, the, both both are correct. All right. So at the end of that question, at the moment, excuse me, it is Nikki still one point lead four to Alex Damon's three. And now we get to question six. And that's in episode two, Attack of the Clones. And it is. Which alien character was voiced by actor Ronald Falk? And I was actually quoting C-3PO when he's surprised that there's a gift in Return oh. of the Jedi, but I understand it might have sounded like Labyrinth. Yes. Five, four, three, <laughs> two, one. Hands down. Hands up, please. And we start with Nikki. Dexter Chester. Yes. Alex. Obi-Wan. <laughs> so Alex. And it does the impression, but it's still only worth one point. Uh, and it Uncanny. Is, it was. 5-4. Five, 5-4. Four, five, four. And we get to our next question here. It's Revenge of the Sith. Which actor took over the role of Kit Fisto in the film? What are you doing down there? Were you kicking around uh, Outer Banks for like a college retreat or something? Um, it's just visiting friends. Is that Keep okay? Big. No. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Alex Damon. No idea. And Nikki? I guessed Nick Gillard. Looking for Ben Cook. Okay. Ben <laughs> Cook is the answer. So the writers are wow. throwing some fire. At wow. Melanta and Damon. And here is the next question. Yeah, we may see a team up between Damon and Demolanta <laughs> against the Rutgers. <laughs> um, let's move on to our next category of mixed bag. And since I'm asking the question, you can probably guess what movie I'm going to pull out for a point. In Return of the Jedi, Yoda says, What is upon me? And soon night must fall. Just need you to fill in that blank at the beginning of the quote. So they both have. It's the two stumpers, mm -hmm. but Nikki only missed two. Alex missed three. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please, and we start with Nikki. Twilight. Yes, Alex. Twilight. All right, so it is now 6-5. Nikki with a one-point lead as we get to question nine. It's the Empire Strikes Back. In the Empire Strikes Back. When Han first mentions Lando, he calls him a gambler, scoundrel, and what else? I think Yoda would have reviewed those uh, Twilight movies. Not good they are. <laughs> Jacob T. Maya. Five. Four. We get paid. Two. <laughs> one. Pens down, please. And we start with Alex. A card player. Yes, Nikki. A card player. That's correct. All right. So, Nikki, keeping that one point lead, it is 7 6 going into our final question of round number one. Mark, what's the category? Oh, I'll tell you. Thanks for asking. It's planets and locations. And for a point, in episode three, Revenge of the Sith, what coastal city also serves as the capital of the planet Kashyyyk? I believe that is. Uh... Tom Dagnino's home world. Christian <laughs> Stoneface. Five. Yeah, I'm just four. This question's me. He's Three, in his zone. Two, <laughs> one. Hands down. Hands up, please. I don't know why I said that so. Yeah, I was very stern. Hands out. And we start with Nikki. Kachiro. Yes. And Alex. Kachiro Village. Yeah, they're both both acceptable, and it is now. 8-7 at the end of round number one. Nikki Dimolanta with a one-point lead over the former champion Alex Damon. And now we get to round two. It is the wheel round. Mark, what do you got? That's why we call it the wheel round, because the very lively, fun virtual wheel will be emerging. Each competitor gets a spin at it. Once you settle on a category on that third wheel, five questions in that particular realm will emerge. Each question is worth two points. No penalty for missing a question. However, remember I winked about steals before? This round is the reason why. Stealing is available. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which 
people in the know tell us is correct. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. And once again, it is a one point lead for Demolanta over Damon. So, Nikki, you have the call. Would you like to spin that wheel first or defer to your demonic opponent? Oh, wow. I'll defer. <laughs> okay, deferring it is. All right, so we're going to drop out Nikki Demolanta. All right, the wheel is up, and it is time for Alex Damon to spin. And here is the spin. All right. Round and round it goes. This is Star Wars is one of those things where opponents and spinners is really not too much of an option. There's there is Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace. All right, 60 seconds to the side, starting now. Uh, obviously we've spoken about this, but just checking in, what do you think it else? Yeah, Phantom Menace has been hit a lot, so I think there's probably gonna be some more deep cuts in there. I say let's spin it again. Especially on a day where the cuts seem to be deep already. I agree <laughs> with you. Let's let's spin this again. Remember, no blank boards, though, Alex. No blank boards on this one. Uh, I, even though it's not a board round, you know what I mean. You got this. Let's spin again, no matter what it is. Take your time and uh, bring home this W. All right. Thank you to Roxy. And yeah. Here's yeah. No blank boards. Just make sure your pens are down because it will draw the ire of Commissioner. Yeah, that was he was very aggressive about that. Look at that. Spinner's choice. Wow, wow good, good call on respinning there, Mark, huh? Well this this is like a nightmare though. I know, you hate this position. I know you do. Uh, <laughs> talk to me where where's your gut going? Sixty seconds. Uh, I've spent the most time of my life with the original trilogy, so probably something in there. Uh, I'm feeling a new hope. <laughs> me too, especially because you are the hope. Heart of the stars, hope of the stars. Good luck, Alex. Multiple choice if you need it, but seriously, take your time on these. It's okay to take that extra second just to double check in with yourself. Got it. Okay. Thank you to Roxy. And now we bring back Nikki DeMolante. All right. So now Alex Damon, he got Spinner's Choice. He chose New Hope. Alex, are you ready? I'm ready. In A New Hope, who plays the character of Gold 2, a.k.a. Dex Tyree during the Battle of Yavin? Uh, multiple choice. Is it A, Jeremy Sinden, B, Graham Ashley, C, Don Henderson, D, Leslie Schofield? Can I get a repeat of the options, please? Yes, you can. A, Jeremy Sinden, B, Graham Ashley, C, Don Henderson, D, Leslie Schofield? Let me go B. B is incorrect. Nikki, I'm going to give you the question and the multiple. In A New Hope, who plays the character of Gold 2, a.k.a. Dex Tyree, during the Battle of Yavin? Is it A, Jeremy Sinden, B, Graham Ashley, C, Don Henderson, D, Leslie Schofield? A. A is correct. One point steal for Nikki. Wow. Here's question two for Alex. In A New Hope, the opening crawl states, Rebel spies managed to steal secret plans to the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star. A what space station with enough power to destroy an entire planet? Armored. Yes, sir. Two points. In a new hope. What is the name of the septoid treadwell droid that the Jawas are trying to sell? Good job, riders. <laughs> wow. Multiple choice. Is it A Lindroid? B, WED-15, C, R-1 Reactor, D, 3B-6-R-A. B. That is correct. WED-15 is correct for one point. All right, here is, that was question three. Here's question four. In A New Hope, how many stormtroopers escort Princess Leia to speak with Darth Vader while on the Tantive Four? Four. Two points. And final. Kim Falkenberg portrays which bounty hunter in A New Hope? Five. Four. Repeat the question. First one. Kim Falkenberg portrays what bounty hunter in A New Hope? Greedo. It's incorrect. And here is the question, Nikki. Kim Falkenberg portrays what bounty hunter in A New Hope? Wow. 
five, four, three. Beto. Looking for Joss Poor, D J A S P U H R. Sure. Yep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So Alex Damon regretting his comments on a certain point of view when he talked about the writers and the question. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right. Here, here is the where we stand at the moment. It is 12 9. Alex Damon up by three after. Alex is round two, so Nikki DiMolanta will now spin the wheel. We bring in Amaru. All right, the wheel is now in Nikki DiMolanta's court. She will spin it, and here is the spin. All right, round and round it goes. Will it be a choice, or will it be a specific movie in Star Wars? Camp? Force okay, Awakens. check it out. <laughs> yeah, I've gotten the yeah. Force Awakens in my last two <laughs> matches. So... I think to mix it up, I think I have to spin again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's let's do this again. It doesn't let's matter where it again. lines on. You're, you're gonna just, be fine, and, I don't, and we'll get there. <laughs> I don't want to do it three times in a row. All right, here's let's spin again. away. She's spinning away from Force Awakens, and here it is. So whatever Nikki gets on this one, Mark, she's got to take. That is correct, unless it's a New Hope. <laughs> That's right. And it's again Spinner's choice. Let's go. <gasps> oh yeah, right. Let's go. No, yeah. I feel like Alex. I. Ah. Okay, so so do you want to go with uh, what you talked about earlier in one of those two remaining ones, or do you feel like going broader might help out, maybe not go as deep? What do you feel? I'm kind of feeling like sticking with one movie. Okay, um, you know? so then do, do we got prequels or, or do we got uh, the, the, the new era? I'm almost kind of thinking standalone. Okay, so uh, let's do it. You got it. Let's see, hold on one second. Um. Ah, sure. Let's do Rogue One. All right. Rogue One. All right. Rogue I, One is the category. Don't forget, you got all three repeats uh, and challenge. Uh, call me in if you need. Thank you. All right, Mark. It is now Nikki Dimalanta who gets an opportunity to answer some questions here in round two. Here we go. That's right, Nikki. This is the category of Rogue One, which I'm being told in my ear is a Star Wars story. Helps to know that. So for two points, unless you need multiple choice, your first of five questions is, in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, what is the specific name of the UT-600 U-Wing shuttle that Jin and Cassian take to Jeddah? The LMTR-20. I mean, everybody knows that. That's just common knowledge. That is correct for two points. And already, Demolanta closing the lead of Damon to just one. Here's your next question. Which actor portrays Galactic Empire Captain Dunstig Taro in the film Rogue One? Tony Pitts. And he's great at it. That is correct for two more points. And Demolanta has the lead and three questions remaining in her round number two. Here is question three. And it is. In Rogue One, when Cassian left the crashed ship on Edu, in what configuration was his weapon in? Sniper configuration. The Tom Berenger classic film rears its ugly head once again. That is correct for two more points. And so now Demolante expanding the lead. Two questions remaining. Your penultimate question in the category of Rogue One. In Rogue One, how many Death Star engineers are interrogated and executed by Krennic? Six. Orson was angry that day. That is correct for two more points, 17 to 12. And Demolanta still has a question remaining. It could be as much as a seven point ball game in Nikki's favor heading into round three. We're not there yet. Here's where we are. The final question for Demolanta in round two. In Rogue One, as the crew is trying to land on Edu, K2SO says, what is the percent chance of failure? Well, initially it's 26%. And that is correct for two points. And Christian, just like that, Spinner's Choice hands out for Nikki Demolanta. Rogue One, clearly a film she's seen at least once, and she aces that round. And so now it is a tall mountain to climb, perhaps the tallest mountain in the history of Alex Damon's glorious career if he wants to mount a comeback in round three. Nikki Demolanta with a commanding seven point lead going into round number three. It is the final round. Mark, how does it go? It is 
the round that will determine the match and who advances into the finals of the tournament. Round three works as thus. Each of you will hear three questions. Hope you have the correct answers to those. We derive those questions from a series of numbers provided by you, the competitor. Your numbers may range from 1 to 20. We do need three numbers from each of you. You may not pick the same numerals as your opponent. Each integer corresponds to a unique category of Star Wars Schmodown mystery. What secrets lie in that galaxy? We're about to find out. Your first question's worth two points. Your next one, three points. Your final question, five big points. It is a impressive lead for Nikki Demolanta as of the moment. So, Demolanta, you have the choice. Do you want to give us your three lucky numbers now? What feels fortunate from one to 20? Hmm. Um, two, three, and eight. Two, three, and eight, four. She had a harder time answering that question than she did any Rogue One <laughs> yeah. question, Christian. Yeah, two, three, and eight for Nikki and for Alex. Five, six, and three. Five, six, right. and three. All right. All right, the managers have given inspirational speeches to their various competitors, and we do make a footnote that Alex had said three when it was already number taken by Nikki de Melanta. so we're not going to ask two questions in the same category. Alex has checked to the hot route number seven, which we were assured by his manager is just as sexy. <laughs> All right, so Alex, you need to get some points on the board here in order to catch up to Nikki with the score at the moment being 1912. All right, here is your first question mark. He chose for his two pointer, just category five. That's right, Alex. This is a two pointer. You can cut the lead to five, and the category is Who Said It? These are Star Wars quotes and quotables. And your question for two points Which character said you're going to need a nickname? Because I ain't saying that every time. Han Solo. It sounded like something Harrison Ford would say as well. That is correct for two points. The lead is sliced to five. Now Damon has his three-point opportunity. All right, here is the three-point. He chose category six. Alex, that's going to correspond to the world of heroes within the Star Wars universe. And here it is. In episode one, The Phantom Menace. What words of advice does Anakin's mother give him before Sebulba sabotages his pod? Five, four, repeat. Second one. Second JTE rule. And it is in the category of heroes and the question. In episode one, The Phantom Menace, what words of advice does Anakin's mother give him before Sebulba sabotages his pod? Be careful. It's incorrect. You're looking for <sighs> be safe. Be safe. So here's where we stand. If Alex Damon hits his five, he ties up Nikki Dimolanta. However, if he misses his five, Nikki Dimolanta will win via TKO and advance to the finals against Gold Leader. Mark, he chose category seven. Category seven is one of the most beloved films in all of Star Wars, and now it's your five pointer. That's the good news. But the bad news potentially is that it is Star Wars Episode Four A New Hope. Here it is. To avoid the TKO and to tie Demolanta for the lead, your question. In Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, Luke notices a lot of what on R2-D2, which prompts him to say that the droid has seen a lot of action. Carbon scoring. Looks like you boys have seen action, as has Alex Damon in his career, and he's not going down without a fight. That is correct. We are tied at the top, Christian. We are tied at the top. Nikki DeMolanta is in a position to win the game. All she needs to do is hit one of her three questions. If she does, she advances to the finals to face gold leader. She chose category two for her first question mark. Category two. Category two, Nikki, and this is your two-pointer and could be the potential game-winning question, which sends you to the finals. It's in the category of the Jedi Order. Okay. And your question. For the win, what are the first words Obi-Wan Kenobi says to Luke Skywalker after Obi-Wan's death through the Force? We do need the quote. Run, Luke, run. And your winner! 
Advancing to the next round, Nikki Demi Dimalanta. Dimalanta does it. Dimalanta beats Kanan. We've heard it, but this is the first time that Nikki Dimalanta defeats Alex Damon. She is going to the finals to face gold leader. Major upset, but man, did she do it convincingly. Congratulations, Nikki. A lot of emotions, obviously, there. Amaru Moses, congratulations. We will see you in the winner's circle with Steph Sabra in just a moment. Nikki, Amaru, it's so good to be with you both. Nikki, as a woman who is a fan of Star Wars, it is so incredible to see another woman competing in this division. But not only are you lovable, you are now 3-0, and and you have beat a champion, Alex Damon. How are you feeling right now? Nikki, I'm excuse me, real quick, real quick, before you must address her as Star Wars competitor, Nikki Dima Lanza. <laughs> hyper up, hyper up, Amaru, hyper up. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I just blacked out or something. I don't know what just happened. I feel, I mean, I feel good. I feel great. I know. I saw you kept, you were having fun the entire match as Amaru was talking about, but at the end when you heard your name and you came out with that dub, I saw the emotion run over your face. What are some of those emotions? Are you still processing? Yes, I'm still processing. It's because I've been, I've been like, sweating all day like <laughs> i've been feeling just like i want to throw up all day so to have a little bit of relief and to know that i actually can do it it's crazy it's really crazy i'm and alex yeah. is a monster of a competitor so it feels really good i mean he really is i was introduced to the league with alex damon i think he is one of the greatest to ever do it so to have a win against him and now the demolanta house has Two win has multiple wins against him. What is what does that feel like? Is that been the goal, or is it just to keep these wins consistent while you're being? This is your first season in the league. The goal has just been to do as best as I can because, you know, the goal is not to like beat Alex. You know, yeah, like, it's not like that because I, I I love Alex. He's a great guy. So it's not like he was. It was like I got to beat Alex. It was like no, I got to do the best I can and hope that that's enough. And uh, today, I guess it was, and that is it. Just blows More my than mind. Enough. Yeah, I just I'm I'm so blown away. I, I'm still processing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy because I heard that you were joining the league. You went from not wanting to be a part of the league and now you're three and oh, I mean, the, to be three and oh in Star Wars, to be three and oh in any part of any league is a big deal. But in Star Wars is a crazy feat. How is this momentum feeling moving forward now? And you're going to be taking on gold leader. Oh, that's wild. You know, 3-0, and oh, it's crazy. I was hoping to just get one win. Like I told Andrew, like, oh, my first match, huh, maybe if I win, I'll just retire right there and be like, bye guys, like retire right on top, you know? And so who would have thought that it would have turned into 3-0 and oh. and gold leader, he's insane. So that's... That's a that's a that's another tall mountain to climb. Yeah, so. yeah, but you 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 came into this just having fun and you killed it, and you're gonna go do the same thing as he smiles and does whatever he does, and <laughs> yeah. it's not gonna phase you. So you're gonna be just as good as you were today. <laughs> Amaru, I've loved watching you hype up Nikki today and be in her corner as the manager for the day. And I know the usual suspects had a hard decision with two great competitors and ultimately with Nikki. Talk to me about that and how that's proven uh, to be obviously with the win today moving forward. Look, I told her coming into this, I was going to be her split star, my, her split star to, to her Buster Rhymes, and that's what I'm doing, and that's what Marie is doing. It, it was difficult, of course, because we have two ladies who are absolutely amazing at Star Wars. Two time uh, uh, Dragon Con. Thinking? Thank you, because I can't, I don't do Dragon She's Con. Amazing. Dragon Con champion <laughs> there, and Marie was like, go. <laughs> go represent for us. Go do this. So, as hard as a decision was for Sam to make that decision, for the two of them, they were just like, you you do it, you do it, you do it, you do it. Oh, yeah. And it, it didn't matter. We are 100% behind Star Wars competitor, Nikki Di Melanta. <laughs> They'll never get over you saying that. It sounds too <laughs> damn good. But Nikki, I know Gold Leader is going to have some words for you. So oh, do I you bet. have anything to say to him? 
I'm not falling prey to his game. You know, I know he's going to have a lot of stuff to say and I'm not going to, I'm not, I don't care. You know, it is what it is. I don't, I don't, I don't make guarantees, you know, because that's when you get yourself into trouble. So I'm not making guarantees. I'm not saying I'm going to beat him. I'm not saying he's going to go down and, you know, in flames and whatever. My, my only words to him are, you seem like a nice guy and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> You're like, Han, don't tell her the odds type of gal. I, I see yes. you. I yes. see you. So you. we will see that go down. Congratulations again. Moving on to the finals. Good luck. And I hope to see you soon, both soon. Alex and Roxy, it's good to be with you both. Alex, I see you shaking your head right now. I know this was a tough match, but I got to say I was introduced to the league with you as the king, and that's still how you remain in my head. The knowledge is always there, but sometimes the game plays differently. What's going on in your head? Yeah, I mean, it's just... Like you said, I, I was the king once, and I, I was really pushing for this league to grow and develop. I, I feel like asking the Schmodown for anything is like a monkey's paw. I wanted new faces in here, but I wanted new faces I could beat. I didn't say get new Star Wars experts. I said, let's bring some people in here, not people like Nikki Dimalanta. And I said, let's make the questions harder, but ask me questions that make me look good, not bad. That's, that's what I was looking for. But you know, sometimes that's just the way things go. Alex, you couldn't look bad if you tried. That's the truth of the matter. Thank and you. as a Star Wars fans, fan, you got some really hard questions. But I know, Rox, you've been, this is your guy. You're rooting for yeah. him all day, 24-7. This is, this is me. This is me staring into my cup thinking, what is in the water? What is in the water this season? Because I, I, can't, I can't express enough how incredible Alex is. And... It just, I don't know what's happening. That this is, I, I would put him toe to toe with any person, any time. And the fact that we're a few losses in this season, and that's not something Alex is used to, I have to reassess my management and, and look at what we need to do uh, for as long as Alex will have me. I just want to help get him back to the belt. I know it's going to happen. It's just taking longer than we expected. And it's sad and it sucks and he deserves it. And he is the reason that he is the thing that's pushed this league to have harder questions. And at some point that's not gonna bite him in the butt because he has more knowledge than anybody else. But today it's just like, what is in the water? I don't know. Yeah, it, it's so crazy because like I said, it's you have the knowledge. You clearly have the knowledge. Knowledge just doesn't go away and it's clearly not gone away from you. But when you're looking at the season in hindsight, what do you think uh, would be the mental shift for you, Alex, moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think that I do have knowledge in my head, but there is definitely, I saw some weak points today uh, <laughs> that I kept getting a certain type of question that was making me stumble. And I mean, stuff like actors of minor characters, that is movie trivia, so that's not a complaint. That is a legitimately hard question and a gap I need to fill in next season. Um, you know, I've, I've focused way too much on the fake world. I need to focus a little bit on the real world and uh, fill in that gap. I gotta ask Alex, so we've seen in the past, you know, Dan Merle's had problems with corruption and now it seems like Dimolanta has been, the house of Dimolanta has been a problem for you. How are you viewing them? Is, is this the problem or is it something else? Well, I think that the Dimolantas, I mean, they they know the Schmodown. I, I think that they know how to play the game very well. And that's something that I think I can fix on my end is kind of, get to that level of gamesmanship. Figuring out the game, switching the technique. I know that uh, we've talked sports all day, Rox, uh, since the beginning of this match. And as the manager, I know this has been a tough season. Like, what would the gameplay switch be moving forward? You figuring it out, like you said. Well, the good thing with what Alex just said is we know exactly the direction we need to go in. It's a certain type of question and while Alex has seen these movies more than anybody else. Alex, frame for frame, knows every single part of these movies. Their trivia encompasses a lot more, and that's something that, as the questions get harder, you, we just need to spend more time studying. We need to spend more hours, and they're going to have to be doing the same thing, too. You get lucky sometimes with questions, and the fact that in 
that we both got Spinner's Choice today, but when there was an opportunity for a steal, she didn't know it either. It doesn't show that she has more knowledge than Alex. It shows that she knew the question she was asked today. And that's how the movie trivia schmodown works. So we're going to do everything that we can. Uh, and I'm excited for this to be the thing that lights the fire under our butts because this season has been, I've never, ever, I've been managing for years. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a faction as strong as ours that just can't win. And I'm, that's got to be a goodbye 2021 thing because that's not coming, that stink isn't coming with us into 2022. The good news is how sick will the comeback season feel? And it sounds like you're talking a lot about, I know you're a ride or die and you are very loyal. Is Alex in the plans for next season? And is what is the plan for the stars moving forward in next season? As long as Alex will have me, and I told him this every day that he's played for me, I want to be with Alex. I, I would bet on him 10 out of 10 times every day. And nothing that he's shown me this year has made me think otherwise. It's not Alex that needs to go, it's our game plan. It's the way that the stars operate. We need to we need to reconfigure from the ground up. We need to spend more hours. We need to have better strategy. We need to have a, a new partner system. We need to really, like Alex just pointed out, this is about strategy now, because it's not about knowledge. Well, Alex, it's always a pleasure to watch you and I cannot wait to watch you come back Roxy, always good to see you too. Back to the desk. Look, uh, obviously, Roxy Stryer, it, she's not wrong. She's had a, she, this has been a very rough year for the stars. And it has nothing to do with the fact, I think Roxy has managed brilliantly throughout the whole season, but she lost her two main stars. She lost her A and her B player right away. Alex Damon has had a, uh, an, has had a tough year this year, right? He started out with the IG matches and then obviously losing the title. And it's just been a tough year for the stars overall, but it seems like Roxy is hell bent on putting together a new plan and figuring out how to change the stars all the way around. And if anybody is going to do it, it's going to be Roxy Stryer. Yeah. I mean, you hear terms like new plan, you hear phrases like rebuild from the ground up and it leaves all the Schmodown fans across the galaxy as well as you and I kind of scratching our heads to see exactly what does that mean? How far deep into this reformula is she? But that is all going to be further down the line in the future than the finals of this tournament, which again, we know as of the results today is going to feature gold leader taking on Nikki Demi Demolanta, and what a matchup that is going to be. One of the more impressive Star Wars performances we've seen was on display here from Nikki Demolanta defeating Alex the Demon Dame. Yeah, and one of those two players, whether it is Nikki Demolanta or whether it is Gold Leader, they will be at Spectacular. The question is, will you guys, if you can get there, get there. It is the SchmodownLive.com, December 4th. Tickets are very very scarce at the moment we only have around 30 tickets ga left at the moment general admission it is going to be the pilot episode for season nine so get there all the titles on the line maybe another match we don't know but what we do know is all the titles will be on the line the star wars title obviously being one of them and thomas harper will be putting the title on the line against either gold leader or nikki Demi Dimalant. That's right. In the words of a Los Angeles legend, come on out to the coast. We'll have a few laughs. You're not going to feel like a TV dinner. It's going to be a day of movie trivia, a day of correct answers, some mispronounced questions on behalf of my partner and I, and a whole lot of excitement. So get to the spectacular once again. Tickets to the SchmodownLive.com for all the managers, competitors, the tremendous Steph Sabra, our entire hardworking team at Skybound, and those question writers. That is Christian Harloff. I am Mark Ellis. Right over there is Molly, and we will see you next time here at the Movie Trivia Schmodown.